What's going on ladies and gentlemen? We're gonna do some real simple repairs. Actually, really just one simple repair. At least it should be simple right here. This throttle body unit is no good. And I just found out when I filled up my uh, reservoir with my uh, windshield washer reservoir fluid, the uh, the motor is broken off. The nipples broke. So we have to order a, uh, I have to order a new motor. And uh, luckily the, uh, the kit that I bought from Autoplicity came with the throttle body unit, even came with the O-rings for the fuel lines, came with the uh, air breather gasket, and it came with the lower gasket. So everything you need to disconnect and plug this thing in. And I was wrong about the price the other day when I told you guys it was, uh, I think I said 350 or 400. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I got that pretty, pretty wrong. This unit was $550. I, I simple mistake my bad I know how do you make a mistake like that I don't know um, five hundred and fifty dollars for this new unit this is a uh, what does it say auto fine products LTD remanufactured in Canada so flow matched fuel injectors these are balanced they're paired they're mated we've got a recalibrated we got a brand new I should say brand new idle air control solenoid brand new throttle position sensor and calibrated everything on this should be perfect it's a beautiful TBI unit, but it's expensive. And I know a lot of you out there are going to say that the TBIs are junk. And I mean, I agree with you. See, throttle body injection is old school. It's outdated. It's pretty much worthless. It's basically a, a glorified carburetor. But I'll also say this. Uh, this TBI unit has been on this 454 for however long this 454 has been around. I mean, I know the year. It's a 95. Um, so it's been, around, it's been around for a long time. And it still works. Now, the injector that died on it... This TBI unit did not die because the unit itself failed. It died because someone had this wire harness extended out too far and the wire got pinched underneath the air breather, shorted out and blew up the injector. I mean, other than that, there's nothing wrong with this TBI unit, but I figured since, you know, we don't know the true history of this vehicle, you might as well replace this. This will be the culprit for 99% of your problems on one of these motors. The 454 itself is solid, reliable, durable engine. This is a great motor, a massive motor, a heavy motor. I think it weighs around 700, maybe a little over 700 pounds, but it's a damn good solid motor. The TBI unit is also very solid, very reliable. So we've got this, we got a warranty on it. Let's get started. Normally I would say, disconnect your battery. We're not disconnected, crap, over here guys. We're gonna do this quick and simple. Disconnect our vacuum lines. Uh, there's only three bolts holding in. You've got one here, one here and one here disconnect your wires this whole wire harness just pops out and plugs into the new one we got a couple fuel lines on the back i believe a, a supply and a return line there may be a vacuum line on the back as well i believe there's one on the on the back of this and that's it on two plugs this literally should take no more than maybe 20 minutes maybe 30 because i want to clean up the intake manifold a little bit make sure everything's nice and clean before we put it all back together should be pretty simple straightforward and uh when we're done Hopefully it runs like a brand new truck. Now I know this is gonna be difficult for you guys to see. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my camera with me where I can really zoom in and get close to everything. But I'm gonna start by taking these connectors off of the fuel injectors. And then I'm gonna take this little grommet here. And we're just gonna kind of wiggle her out just like that and get these fuel injector connectors away from the throttle body. Next are clipped into the top of the injectors these little rubber grommets to help keep moisture out. We're gonna take those off. Next, I'm gonna disconnect the, uh, there we go. Good God, that was on there tight. That's the uh, throttle position sensor. And over here is the idle air control valve. I'm gonna move that stuff out of the way. I guess this is very simple. We're gonna push this lever back, pop off the, uh, I believe that's the cruise control. Yeah, that's the cruise control. Then on this side, we're going to disconnect the actual throttle linkage, like so. Look how easy this is, guys. This is simple. We're gonna take this vacuum line off, this vacuum line off, Ugh, big Bertha off, that vacuum line off. There'll be one vacuum line. Nope, that's capped off in the back. So literally, that's everything. We have now disconnected the throttle body unit. All that's left is what looks like a, I don't know, uh, I would say a 13, it looks a little big for 13. So somewhere between like an 11 and a 13 here, we gotta take these two off that have the studs on them. The studs will come out separately, then you can just unbolt them, I believe. 
And then the, uh, the two lines on the back, like I said, we'll use a line wrench on those. Should be ready to come out, guys. All right, next we're gonna come up here and disconnect these fuel lines. And this truck's been sitting all day, so I doubt there's any fuel pressure left. I'm gonna use an adjustable wrench on the uh, part of the lines attached to the throttle body unit. I'm gonna use a 5 8 line wrench. That is the, that's the right wrench for the job. We'll adjust this wrench to make sure everything's nice and tight. There we go. Put the 5 8 on the back side of it here. And we should be able to just crack it loose. Let's see. There we go. Just like that. Take our adjustable wrench off. Five eighths fits a little snug. That's okay. You don't want to use, listen to me. This is a line wrench, all right? You don't want to use anything else on uh, brake lines, power steering lines, uh, fuel lines. Please, please heed, heed my advice. Stick to a line wrench, they're just a few bucks. Get them, use them. It's the right tool for the job, otherwise, you're gonna be fighting, uh, stripping out these lines, and you really don't wanna do that, guys. So please, use the right tool for the job. All right, yeah, there, I don't see any fuel spraying out of here yet. Looks like this line, at least, is loose enough to take off by hand. And I think this one is also, uh, she's getting close. She's not quite ready to come off by hand yet. So we'll just keep at it. You gotta remember to replace the O-rings in these fuel lines. You know, why go to all this trouble to do this job and not do it right, you know what I mean? So, pull your lines out. Looks like everything here is good. That's just a matter of uh, taking those bolts out. This thing should pop right off. All right, so I got a 13 because I assume that's about the size it's gonna be. We'll see. Ugh. That's actually 13, maybe. Yeah, 13 is actually a little loose. Hmm. But it got this one off. So this is the this is so easy, guys. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff you could do yourself working on cars. You don't have to pay somebody else to do it. Now there's some things you probably don't want to tackle. Hell, there's some things on the regular. Ugh, dang, that is on there that I don't want to tackle. Ugh. There we go. Two of three. I actually think this is a little, this was a little small under 13. I think it's more like a 12. Get this bad boy apart. I'm excited. I'm excited. You'd be surprised. How many people don't ever take care of their throttle body unit, man, you know? And they don't ever think to look at this as a source for a lot of uh, drivability issues. This should be the first thing you're looking at on a, on a throttle body injected vehicle, man. These things cause tons of problems. You'd be surprised. There it is. We got a little bit of gas dripping out. That's all right. There's your butterfly. I mean, overall, it doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. It's not too shabby. Probably really nothing wrong with it, but I figure we're going this far with it. We'll replace the whole daggum thing. So now that we got it off, again, we got to remember to change these O-rings. There's an O-ring here, tiny one. We'll need to pick, pull off those old rings, put new ones on. We got to get this base gasket off very carefully. Came right off. That's actually surprising. Nice. And uh, we'll get ready to install the new components, clean this up, Put it all back together and we'll see how it runs all right now we're going to take this pick and we're going to get up underneath this gasket right here i'm not worried about breaking it because i got new ones and we're going to pry this thing off just like that and we're going to pry this one off this one's a little more difficult it's really really this is a tiny tiny little o-ring and I definitely don't want to stab myself either because these picks will go right through you. They're super sharp. Let's see if we can get down in there and... There we go. It broke. 
and that happens there's no it's no big deal there's the old one the old big one and there's the old small one now what i've already taken the liberty of doing besides cleaning this whole thing up for you is i lubricate this in motor oil just a little bit of motor oil just a dab really to help ease installation we will simply push it back down into its happy little home there's one now this one's the tricky one because it's so dang small i mean it's a tiny little o-ring you don't want to lose any of these especially now that we broke one all right that one is seated that one is seated now we're ready to put the new throttle body <laughs> now we're ready to put the new throttle body on all right so we're going to take the new throttle body and we're going to try to oh i got to take the uh hold on we're not ready yet i got to take the plugs out of the fuel lines here and we also got to cap off the vacuum line in the back okay so i put a cap back here i removed the fuel lines from up here now it's just a matter of climbing back up under the hood of this thing sitting it down carefully and making sure these bolts go back where they're supposed to go we don't want to damage the new gasket or anything so just got to be real careful with it that one is in that one is in and one more there we go We'll tighten it down and get these fuel lines installed. It'll be time to fire it up. All right, boys and girls, it's about that time. We're gonna spin these uh, fuel lines on by hand back here. Everything seems like it's going back together nicely. We wanna plug in our, uh, ugh. well, that's, uh, that's actually a little tight right there. Plug in our TPS sensor. That went on fine. This one right here, Seems to be a little, uh, a little on the tight side. There we go. That plugged in. It seems all right. Make sure we tighten those down. We got to tighten these up. Let's not forget our vacuum lines over here. There's one there. There's one here. There's our big PCV line right here. This one right here, which I believe controls the air conditioning step-up solenoid. All right. Or maybe that's the. Uh, fast idle kick down solenoid I don't know for sure it's almost time we're getting there I'm getting excited you got to be careful you get all excited and that's when you start making mistakes you know what I mean so don't get too carried away don't get too crazy with the cheese whiz start tightening this down it doesn't have to be very tight this is not one of those things you're going to be torquing down, guys, okay? So, no torquey torquey. All right. One more. And that should do it. Put on our... Uh, throttle put on our cruise control slip this back on here there we go throttle linkage on make sure we get that clip on there don't forget to put these back on I'm getting excited <laughs> All right, slide this back in here. Nice and firm. Make sure your connectors are nice and solid and clipped in. And they are. Whew. Don't forget your uh, air horn gasket here. I guess that should have gone on first because it looks like it's going to be... Come on, there we go. There we go. All right. We'll uh, put a real quick tighten down on the uh, fuel lines back here with that 5 8 And again, this isn't something you got to torque down, guys. You want it to be a little, a little over snug, nothing more, unless you don't ever want to get them off again.
All right, boys and girls, that's that. Now we get the keys, get all of our tools out of the way here, and uh, we make sure it runs. Let's see what happens. I'm nervous, nervous. We'll uh, turn the key on and off a couple times, make sure the fuel system is primed. And then I will go over to the throttle body and check for any leaks from those lines. All right, let's take a look and make sure we don't have any fuel spewing out all over the place. I don't believe we do. Fuel lines are good. And now we are safe to crank her over. Uh oh, we got some country on the radio. so she's not entirely happy with her new throttle body unit um, it's definitely running a lot differently than it was before one thing I didn't do was disconnect the the negative battery cable and there's a possibility that somewhere in the system the computer is all kinds of screwed up because of the new calibration of the TPS natal air control solenoid possibility I don't know for sure I'll be quite honest with you um, so we disconnected the bat the negative cable I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes I'm gonna hook it back up we're gonna fire it back up and then we'll check again. If the check engine light comes back on, we're gonna have to run a diagnostic on it, but I'm probably gonna save that for another day because it's getting late. As you can see, it's completely dark outside. I don't really wanna be sitting out here uh, working by myself at night. So uh, I'll do my best to sort this tonight. And if we can't, then we'll probably just have to come back another day. It's probably a thing of we're gonna need to check and adjust the timing. Be a good idea to replace the spark plugs to run a diagnostic on this. Because this is OBD1, there are two connectors. It's, uh, there are two connectors that you literally uh, put a jumper wire between and it will flash the check engine light. So it'll flash like one, two, pause, then one, two, three, four, that'd be a code 24. You can then look up those codes. Um, but you know what, I think I may have one even better. I think that this, uh, I think this scanner of mine, this launch, uh, I forgot what this thing was, the X431 Pro Mini. I think this in the box actually came with an OBD1 adapter for GM. So I think we could actually just run the codes that way and find out what else is going on. We'll start with that before we go replacing plugs and timing and all that stuff. We'll check, make sure we get all the codes sorted, all the sensors that need replaced, replaced. Um, before we even attempt to adjust things like the timing or anything. But we're gonna let it sit for a minute. We'll see if we can fire it back up. It actually died twice. Uh, unfortunately, I'd already turned the camera off, so didn't get that on camera. I mean, it runs great. It's got plenty of uh, uh, power as far as hitting the gas pedal. She's, she's very responsive. It just uh, idling, it's kind of blah, 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 you know what I mean? And then it just, then it just stalls out. Uh, fires right back up though. And here's one thing I wanted to show you guys. How about this? Do any of you know what this is? This is called a, a this is the Hydra Boost system. And this is real interesting because it looks like the brake master cylinder, the brake pedal is actually assisted by the power steering pump, which is right down there. There's a brand new power steering line on here, right here. So the power steering actually comes through here, goes into this Hydra Boost system and assists in the brake pedal, helps you stop the vehicle. Definitely unique. I have never seen anything like that before. Comment below if you have. I'm curious to see how many of you have seen this Hydra Boost setup and tell me what your thoughts are on it. Do you like it? Love it? Do you hate it? Do you bypass it? I'm thinking we're going to keep it because it appears to be working just fine. So let me, uh, let me hook this battery cable back up and let's see what it does. Here goes nothing. Take two. Yeah, that's, uh, that's strange. She does not want to run at all now. Uh. 
This is very, very disappointing. Very smooth, but, th but it just dies. It will not run. Will not stay running for anything. No check engine light yet. Okay, so I've gotten all of your opinions on the truck so far and I am 100% with you. I agree with you, the truck was a bad decision. The truck was the worst decision I have ever made in the history of purchasing cars. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do have kind of a, well not kind of, I, I have a serious problem with impulse control when it comes to uh, things like this, mainly cars. I don't really have a problem uh, with impulse control when it comes to anything else in life, just cars. I saw that truck, I loved it, decided I had to have it, and by that time it was already like in my mind that I was gonna buy it, and I did. Now, uh, I, want, I wanna point out all of you that commented were 100% on point when you said that guy saw me coming 100 miles away, you know, uh, I took the bait, I, I knew better. Yes, 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 I did. And here's where we're at. Uh, it's done. So we're gonna move past the fact that I made a horrible mistake, a mistake paying $6,500 for this truck. Absolutely not worth it. In fact, it's interesting, it's not interesting. It's aggravating today I found one locally on Facebook Marketplace for $2,200. Now the body was not in good shape at all, but it only had 120,000 miles. It's a 6.5 liter uh, diesel, and it is a dually. It is a uh, Chevy 3500 on Facebook Marketplace for 2,200 bucks. It's running, driving, cold air conditioning. So, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I could have bought the diesel for $2,200, and we could have done some body work, gave it a paint job, and you know, what would we have in it? 3,500, 4,500, wouldn't have 6,500 in it. That's beside the point. Unless I go buy that one and sell this one. Or did I already do that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, listen, we're having all kinds of problems with this thing. And I, I, I will say this about the truck. It was running and driving perfectly fine before I tightened up the bolts on the uh, air cleaner assembly and inadvertently crushed the fuel injection wires that were laying underneath it. I had no idea that they were pinched under it. It ran fine. We weren't having any issues with it. Now we are. So here's what I learned. I, I got to pull up my, my paper here. They used different throttle bodies on that truck almost every year. In 1990, they used, and this is from a, a different company. This isn't the actual part number of the Rochester uh, uh, throttle body, but the part that I'm using, the current throttle body that's on it, they make, they reman all of these. So in 1990, the part number is an FI9026. 91 to 92, it's an FI9029. 93, it's an FI9034. 94 to 95 is an FI9043. Starting 96, there were no more throttle bodies because uh, GM switched over to the Vortec. It's still a 454, but it's really a completely different engine than this one. Um, so we don't have to worry about anything from 96 plus. Now, from what I've been able to find, the 1990 FI9026 doesn't look anything like the one that came off of mine. It's missing some pretty important uh, levers on the side, pieces are missing. So I'm pretty certain we can, we can rule out an FI9026. Now, 91, 92, and 93, the uh, 9029 and 9034, those also seem to be missing the appropriate studs on the side of the linkage for me to hook up my cruise control and stuff. So those don't really look like they would fit it either, which only leaves the FI9043. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to call this company tomorrow and, and give them every part number that I could find off of my throttle body unit and see 
if they can match that with something in their system to make sure I got the, the right one. And if not, then I guess we're gonna have to take the throttle body unit off. There's really, there shouldn't be anything that could have gone wrong. There shouldn't be anything that, that, that could be causing a problem on my end. It was literally three bolts, a few vacuum lines, and a couple fuel lines. We know the fuel lines aren't leaking. The vacuum lines are all hooked up. We put a new base gasket on it. Um, so unless there's something wrong with the TBI unit itself, I don't know what's going on because it was not acting this way before. Now I drove it 30 some miles today on the highway, got it up on the highway. And let me tell you, it wasn't happy. Um, I was hoping that maybe, you know, getting it on the highway, opening it up, it would help relearn the computer or something. Remember this is OBD1, old school stuff. Uh, things don't always work instantaneously when you install a new sensor. Uh, that didn't help at all. In fact, I think it may have gotten a little bit worse. And the only thing we changed was the TBI unit. It will pull and shudder and pull and shudder and uh, it dies at stoplights, dies at intersections. Um, and you got to sit there and restart. It's really, it's embarrassing. It's a beautiful truck, but it's embarrassing that you got to start, you got to restart it constantly because it's always dying. And you can hear it when you get on the road and blah, 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 blah. Well, this is not good. Not good. And to add insult to injury, those beautiful Michelin tires that I was so proud of, no. No, those things are from 2013. They've been sitting for so long that there are some flat spots on them. So when you get on the highway, it's like kind of riding on rocks, sort of. So all six tires will need to be replaced as well. Um, oh, and one last thing I found out tonight, the headlights turn themselves off after so long. Yeah, you turn the headlights on and they're great, everything works. And then about 10 or 15 minutes into it, the headlights, just the headlights, parking lights, the dash lights, tail lights, everything still works. The headlights themselves shut themselves off and they will stay off for three to four minutes before they magically turn themselves back on again. Yeah. Okay. So I officially screwed up big time, bigger than ever before. I get it. You know it. I know it. Let's, let's just drop it and move on. Now we have to make some decisions. I can't even resell the thing because it doesn't run right. And I'm not going to sell it with headlights flashing on and off to somebody. That's extremely dangerous. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So the, at least at the very least, we got to figure out what's going on with the TBI unit. We got to get that resolved because nobody's going to buy it for anything like that. Um, the headlight issue needs to be resolved because I'm not going to sell it with, you know, faulty headlights. And then what do I think I could get out of the truck if we decided to sell it? I'm thinking 4,000 to 4,500. I think that's fair. I mean, I managed to sell the Chevy 2500 for 4,000 and it was a little rough around the edges as well. I think someone would give 4,000 to 4,500 for the Dually. Still leaves me losing quite a bit of money because um, I've got 6,500 plus 550 in the throttle body unit. Wow. And, and, and that's before we finish getting it resolved. So that, that's one hell of a loss. At this point, honestly, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to sell it, does it? I mean, there's no way of recouping the money. It almost makes more sense just to, to fix it and keep it. We'll see what happens. It just depends on how much of a Frankenstein mess this thing is. As soon as I found out that it used to be a diesel, I should have stayed away from it because it's, it's a cluster. You, you get where I'm going with this. Okay, so that's it. That's everything that I can think of. If you've got any information on these whole Rochester TBI units, please help me out. I called the guy and asked him what year the motor came out of because supposedly he was the one that, you know, built this truck. Uh, he didn't know. He needed to call the guy. He only had it a year. He needed to call a friend of his whose buddy used to own the truck to find out and he would get back with me and nobody ever got back with me. So now I'm sitting here with a truck that I have no clue what year the engine came out of. When I told him it was probably uh, older than 95 or 94, 95. He said, no, I'm certain it's newer than that. And I said, there's no way it's newer than that because in, uh, 96, the engine went to a Vortec and it's a completely different motor. It's multi-port injected, um, not throttle body. And he was like, Hmm, I'll, I'll, I'll have to get back with you. Nobody got back with me. Do me a favor, make me feel a little better by thumbs upping this video. I would appreciate, 
appreciate it. Look, we got the unit changed out. There's not much more I can do other than tomorrow just call them. So I appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel so you can watch all of these horrible mistakes I make on a regular basis. It sucks for me, but I do know that it is entertaining for a lot of you. Um, click that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you can get notified of uh, new uploads. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please, auto auction rebuilds on Instagram. You see stuff going on like three, four, five days in advance before you're ever going to see it on YouTube. I would certainly appreciate it. Trying to get my Instagram up to 10,000 uh, followers. I almost said subscribers. It's one o'clock in the morning. I, and I still have to edit this video and upload it, so please forgive me for being exceptionally tired. It was a long day. I worked on three cars today. Um, with that, I'm out of here. I certainly appreciate all of you for uh, giving me your opinions and telling me how stupid I was to buy this truck. I couldn't agree with you more. I will catch you all very, very soon in the next one.